Welcome, welcome, welcome to our ASAP friends and family and to the millions of new viewers watching from across the world. Welcome to the premier channel for all things Lakers content. We are the Lakers Talk one-on-one. I'm your host, Big Phil. I got my man, Freddie, in the house. How you doing, Freddie? You got Big Time and Jonathan Massett. Y'all say what's up to the people. Man, I'm just glad to be here. The A, free agency has been crazy. Laker free agency been crazy. It, and the worst part about it, craziness haven't even really begun yet. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, big time? How you doing, John? What's going on, everybody? And as usual, oh, go ahead, John. You're just going to ruin my stuff already. My God. I do land Kyrie Irving. At first, I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that, but I have a good feeling about this, actually. I think you actually muted big time. What's up with you? Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. I said, wait one. And before we get started, don't forget, we are brought to you by the ASAP Sports Network, All Sports, All Plays. If you haven't yet, please like us, subscribe, share, you can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube. We are out there. Uh, we're sponsored by the AAL American Arena League Alliance. Uh, we can find us on Roku TV. Hey, come come chill with us, man. We love fucking sports. We love to give our passionate, unfiltered takes. Come vibe with us. Let, so, um, gentlemen, are you back? You back big time? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the building as usual. I'm surprised y'all didn't hear the crowd go crazy because I am here. I'm, I'm, just, I'm surprised, but, but, but here I am, you know, but, uh, oh my goodness. We, I mean, how long do we get? Because th- this is going to be something else today. Go ahead. I don't even want to waste too much time. Hey, look, we're taking the lid off this thing today. We're taking the lid off this thing today. We're going to get right into it. So, we've been seeing the rumors. We've been hearing about it, Freddie. What do you think about these Kyrie to L.A. rumors? Is it, is it legitimate? Is it something to be worried about? Is it going to happen? What do you think, man? Man, let me get something clarified first of all. <laughs> Because there's some people that's going to come for me. Uh, first off, I just want to let it be known. I don't care. Come for me. I don't care. They, go, You know why they're going to come for me, Phil, Doug, and John? It's because I criticize Kyrie Irving. Because he don't show up to work. He tends to take days off. He tends not to be all the way straight up top. Every once in a while, um, Doug, should I should I change that word every once in a while to quite often? Um, maybe <laughs> well, it, it all of it works right now, so you ain't got to worry about it. Um, but I've never criticized his brother of his play, I've never criticized his play, brother to know that he's one of the best point guards in our game. I've never criticized this brother that he's a bitch, big shot taker and a big shot maker. I've never criticized this brother because he's that great of a talent. So if he join us and if he's all in and he's committed, bought into the team, this is a wonderful trade. This is this is the band-aid that us Laker fans have been waiting for since the season been over. And I just find it very funny that the national media, everybody and their mama said the Lakers have no assets. The Lakers cannot improve this roster. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. Think how 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 sweet has how sweet 
does the sound of this thing of this rumor sounds that we'll we will be able to upgrade our roster and we'll we'll get into details in a little bit in, in a minute mm. jonathan what you got man how Freddie, you feel about you, it but you know freddie uh, uh nowadays a lot of these players influence a lot of power uh so they could pretty much force their way out of town and 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 if they want to really if they really want to be somewhere they can they rest assured they can get their wish you know and i just i just have a feeling that kyrie irving uh by the time it's all said and done he's gonna be a laker he's gonna be wearing the purple and gold uh playing alongside his former teammate lebron james they're gonna reunite at some point they're gonna pull this deal off it's gonna get done this is where kyrie wants to be uh, LeBron wants it to happen. LeBron says he's pushing hard for the Lakers to make this deal come to fruition. So I can see this happening uh, very, very soon. And you John, know, I gotta ask you a question real quick. The players, they have a lot of power now. Can I ask you a question real quick, Jonathan? What? What's up? So, do you mean LeBron and Kyrie gonna be singing "Reunited" and it feels so good? <laughs> what he be doing? I mean, I guess you can say that, right? I mean, it's going to be one of those uh, reunions that we would see uh, with these two, uh, you know, playing together once again. And I think that's what Kyrie Irving needs. I think he needs LeBron James. He needs that guy that's going to keep him in check. And if there's one guy that can do that, it's LeBron James. If there's one guy that can help him stay focused and, and, and keep him right, it is LeBron James. I don't see Kyrie Irving taking too many days off. I don't see him missing too many games. I think he'll show up, especially with now who is coaching the Lakers, because Darvin Ham is not going to put up with any of that nonsense. And Rasheed Wallace is there too. Right. Yep. And Rasheed Wallace is there too. So these guys will definitely, you know, uh, have an impact on, you know, the decisions that he chooses to make. And I, I think Kyrie Irving wants to be a Laker, I think he can make this, I think the, the Lakers can make this work, and I, I definitely think that it's looking good for the Lakers right about now. We got a comment below if I pass it to Doug. Look, no one, no one's hating Russ, right? I appreciate it for all he did, I, and we're going to send him away with a nice gift basket too, but what have you done for me lately? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? What have you done for me lately? The goal in, in La La Land championships I'm, I'm just sorry to say that you know no hard, feelings, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> no hard no hard feelings Russ. we need championships baby but look, Doug. Oh, what did he do Doug. by the matter of fact he, he matter of fact um just let you guys know um pride is very trolling right now um <laughs> that's why he's saying the things that he's saying <laughs> what did he do other than he destroyed team morale the look. It's a reason that Kevin Durant wanted to leave OKC to go play. We'll, we'll go to see. And they had Ibaka in his prime. They had Harden coming up. So, I mean, come on now. <laughs> hey, Doug, the floor is yours, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, first of all, let me talk to uh, my brother Valdez, who just showed that comment. I noticed that you said 2016. Um, I'm quite sure that you are a very intelligent individual. You do realize that this is 2022. So my question to you is, why did you say what he did last year, which is really all we got? And on the record, what he did last year was not good at all. That's just facts. We know it. You know it. Nobody's knocking Russell or Russ Brook at all. If you've been to this show, uh, previous show, I'm one that has said I still believe he's a great player. He's just not great for the Lakers. See what I'm saying? He still be able to do what you used to seeing him do. Okay, now let me get to the matter at hand, Kyrie Irving. I really don't want to talk about Kyrie Irving. I really don't want to talk about Darvin Ham. Uh, Phil, you brought up Rasheed Wallace. I really don't even want to talk about that. The talent of Russ, I mean of um, Kyrie Irving is not even worth talking about. Everybody knows what a special player he is, but we also know what a special person that he is. And I'm saying that in a negative way, 
because he ain't rap too tight. Let's just go and get that straight. He's not. He's not. Great player, dominant basketball player, can't be held. We all know they can score, can dribble, all-star, elite, quad blank player. Yeah. But the person that he is is what we need to talk about. And that's not, that's really not worth to talk about. My point is LeBron James. Because I've checked it already out. I'm a, I'm gonna bless the brother with some diapers, some bottles, some pacifiers, uh, some some uh I'm gonna send him a book of daycareology, uh, some kind of way where he can because this will be his primary role this year. Uh, LeBron's game is suited enough where he don't mind dropping to a number three type option. He can do that. He can do that and still be the guy. This team, if you get a, a Kyrie and an Anthony Davis, if they're healthy, those would be the number one, two, and LeBron James will lead the league in assists this year. I'm going on record saying that he did that a couple of years ago. You put Kyrie here, he's going to be lead the league in assists. We all know what it means for him to be the primary point guy uh, on this team. That's the only thing I'm going to say about that. He really is going to be a daycareology because it is him, and you'll hear about this from me just a little bit later, that is knitting his his team completely together. He wanted Kyrie. I I said no at first. I, I'm still saying somewhat no, but it looked like, from what I'm hearing, that this is going to happen. And let's just be honest with y'all, everybody. Listen. Ain't no sense of y'all hating. If Kyrie and LeBron and Anthony Davis are your big three, you're in good hands. That's all I'm going to say. Now, I'm, I'm done, man. I'm done. To piggyback off that, I want to answer Chris' question. Chris, um, I'm not going to sit here and say, act like I know when this deal is going to be done. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but we just, we're all just waiting to see. It gets um, done sometime today or tomorrow. Well, we'll see. Um, but <laughs> – so I'm gonna piggyback off Doug real quick. We agree, Ky- Kyrie, AD, Braun is a great problem to have. It is a great mm-hmm. three-headed monster. One of the hey, we'll be one of the best teams. Would have a big three. We'll see. You know, we know that LeBron and Kyrie can work. We know LeBron and AD can work. I think Kyrie will help. Will be a better fit for Anthony Davis than Russ was. But the key thing it is, Doug, Kyrie Irving has to show up to work. He has to show up and play. He can't if he don't show up to work, then guess what? All these good things that we say about him is irrelevant. Um, you know, uh, it is irrelevant. And it nobody, and I see Mike in the comments and see. But this is where I'm, I'm gonna break it down. Us as people on this on this show that want to be future reporters in the big industry, want to be reporters for ASAP and make this industry big, you have to report what you see and what we've seen over the last year. And Kyrie Irving is a man that don't want to go to work. Not even just the last year. Over time, we've seen a man that don't want to that do not prioritize basketball as the main thing. When nobody ever said, I know I've never questioned this man's talent. I've never questioned this this, um, man's talent. So, Mike, name a time when I ever questioned his talent, please, sir. Name a time when I said, oh, Kyrie Irving's not a good basketball player. Oh, Kyrie Irving's not one of the best scorers in this game. I mean, so, I mean, me questioning his his work ethic and him coming to work and his play is two different things. So, this year, if he decides to not go to work, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm going to go off on. But if he just if he go out there and he ball and be the Kyrie Irving that he once was, and go out there and be a key team to help this team win a championship, guess what? I'm going to do. I'm going to praise that man. Um, yes, Mike, I did say it. Um, he should retire. If you know if you're not going to play, then you should retire. What's the point of you playing and you you, you don't you don't show up to work? That yeah, let me let me take it back off of you too, Freddie, because a big problem too with with the new the new media, right? We have a lot of analysts that don't really watch games. So Russ, like like you and Doug said, Russ is still a phenomenal player. But it's a business and it's about fit. What we what we're trying what LeBron led teams are trying to do is face the floor 
so that he can go downhill, he can play make, and get the ball into the shooter's hands. Between him, AD, and Russ, we didn't have that. And to be honest, Kyrie, I can guarantee you all, Kyrie is not first option for a star player. I would rather have Bradley Bill, but it's not the way the cards are going to fall. So we got to settle for who we can get. And one of those guys just happened to be Kyrie Irving. And while he may be have a few screws loose in the head, and I apologize for offending anyone, but he's a phenomenal on-court player. And when he shows up, the combo between him and LeBron is unbeatable. It's just unbeatable. Then you add in the healthy AD, a motivated AD. Now we're cooking with Crisco. But our biggest talk to me, Freddie, is that it won't be our big three. It'll be our depth. Any of the issues that LeBron James teams have had when trying to reach a championship is a lack of depth behind those big three. So my, my, I guess my question to you guys now is that who do we acquire to kind of help when LeBron needs a break, when AD needs a break, when Kyrie can't play for whatever reason? How do y'all feel about that? But I don't feel I want to I want to want to address something. I'm, I'm going to ask Doug a question. Doug, um, you you watch basketball, sir? Um, did did did, did Kyrie Irving play all of last year? No, and and we got to be fair to Kyrie on that part. It was not by choice. It was by force. The New York State said that if you were not vaccinated, you could not play play. in New York. So he missed a ton of games. Say it again. But he did have an option, though, right? He had an option to get vaccinated, but, you know, I'm I'm not going to. I mean, I got three, so, I mean, that's me. Uh, but he got in. He didn't get in, and that was his choice. And that choice inevitably hurt the team. See, I've always said that it's not about you, but in team sports, whether you're talking about it's my body, and I don't want to get political here, but when you're in team sports, your choice hurts the team. That's what happened in Brooklyn. It destroyed the team, actually. But that was his choice. That's what he wanted for his body. God bless him. And the price is being paid through the media because of that choice. Uh, James Harden left while the season was going because of that choice. KD now wants to leave once he signed. Say, I don't even want to play with this dude. Pretty much because they are saying he gave up on the team. You left us here. We came here with you to do this special thing. You were the first one to bail out. Now, I'm just saying that's his choice. But when he was on, when he was allowed to play on the road, you know, other than a couple of injuries that he had, he was there. The interesting thing would have been the what if question would have been what if New York would have had the mandate lifted where he could play. And then some of this stuff that we're talking about, then we could have found out, but we'll never know that. And, and I just want to ask Phil a question. Phil, as much as I, I, I did, I criticized Kyrie Irving. I criticized Russell Westbrook. But it is our job to criticize what we see, add up the report what we see. Now, when Kyrie Irving go out there and he plays good, he balls out this year, I have the right to, to, to analyze it, right? Correct. Okay. I, okay. We, we can continue the show. I, I just needed to, <laughs> to go over a few things real quick. I'm sorry. Hey, so Porter Hayes had a comment. He, I think he brought up um, LeBron's legacy if they don't win. And I kind of I, I hate those legacy comps because the guy's been playing for almost 20 years at an elite level, right? He has his rings. He brought multiple teams to the finals. There isn't anything that he can do or not do to come tarnish his legacy. How do y'all feel about that? About the GOAT comparison, about legacies and stuff like that. Well, do you want me to get it first? Because my answer is real simple. Yeah. Okay, this 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 is not funny. I know I kind of crack jokes and everything, but this is not funny. To this day, ladies and gentlemen, for those who feel that way about LeBron, and I personally, personally, have never really been a fan of LeBron. That's me. Uh, I'm a Kobe guy. When they was calling him the king, I was one that's saying, how are you calling this man the king, but he ain't got no crown? You don't have a championship. How are you the king? That's what I was saying and why they were calling him the king. If y'all remember those commercials with Kobe and LeBron, they were waiting trying to see if LeBron and Cleveland could make the finals to meet Kobe. It never happened. How in the world can you be a king when somebody else is, is wearing the crown? So I said that to say this, but 
I'm not saying LeBron is not a great player. See, I don't have to be a fan. I know what he is. He is an all-time great player. To prove my point for those that are saying he's not this and that, it's very simple. To this day, he's played for three franchises. All three won championships, and he was the main guy. So that, I mean, what are y'all, what, what, what are you saying? This dude, wherever we went, he's a world champion. So ain't nothing else to talk about. That brother's legacy is already set. Um, exactly. He's done for the game of basketball, you can't take that away from him. Um, yeah. I mean, at this point, it's already done. If anything, he can add to it. I mean, the championship, he's adding to it. Um, this brother, um, but he, what he does for on the court and off the court, I mean, just think about this, you guys. He was a kid at 18 years old with the camera all on him, with all this, I mean, that fame and all that, I mean, on him at a young, very young age. He he got criticized at a very young age. Um, a lot of people look up to him um, for when things happen outside of basketball that he got to stand up for, um, you know, and, hey, pretty much most of it, he stands up, you know, for the, for the right causes. Um, this is a guy that have exceeded expectations. Um, this is a guy that, you know, most of his career, he's always on the winning side of his career. That might not lead to a championship, but, um, you know, hey, we're talking about, you know, he's in the finals. You know I mean? He's been to 10 finals. So, um, you know, you know, but at the end of the day, his legacy set. Jonathan, before you ask this question, I want you to answer this question from uh, from Mike Hughes right quick. The question was, uh, why add Kyrie? Russ brought ego and issues with, with his work ethic, and you guys want to replace them with a guy with even more work ethic and mental issues. Sounds like fixing a problem with a problem. I disagree with that before I rebuttal. Jonathan, what do you feel about that? Well, I feel that Kyrie Irving is a better all around player. Uh, <laughs> you know, Kyrie Irving, like, I, like I've said numerous times, when he's on, he's on. Mm-hmm. And when he's playing basketball, you know, to the highest degree, he's unstoppable. He really is. You know, look, this guy might be the best ball handler in the league. This guy is one of the most clutch performers in the league when he is actually playing the game. You know, like I said, if he shows up to the building and, you know, he's having one of those nights where he's just – you know, uh, single-handedly carrying his his team on his shoulders, it didn't. It won't be much of a problem. So no, I I don't really see a comparison there. Uh, Russell Westbrook is more of a of a selfish type player in a sense. Uh, you know, this is a guy who misses a lot of shots. Kyrie Irving makes a lot of shots. When he's when he's having one of his explosive and you know um, offensive scoring nights, and we've seen that with Kyrie Irving. So no, I think Kyrie Irving's a better fit for this Laker team uh, for two reasons. He's a true floor general. You know when he's not pouting and and acting like a baby when he's acting like an adult. And and secondly, he's he's teaming up with LeBron. And the last time those two played together, what happened? They won an NBA championship. So there you go. And real quick before Doug goes, and this is very loosely speaking, I mean we're trading passion for skill. I say loosely because Russell Westbrook is an immensely skilled player, but it's two different styles, like you're saying, um, John, two different styles. Right. I don't think you can question the work ethic of either guy, Kyrie or Russ, because they're both incredibly skilled. It's just what fits right. What you got, Doug? Real simple. To answer your question, uh, Mike, this really does not have anything to do with on the floor. What this really has to do with is what I said in my opening take. This really is about the power, once again, of LeBron James. Uh, Jonathan just kind of kind of tapped on it a little bit. What you're banking on is, and there are reports that LeBron and Kyrie have already talked. 
There's already is already out there. Kyrie knows what he is going to have to do, not on the basketball court, but up here and outside to join LeBron James' team. There's no question who the leader of this team is. He don't even have to come in and worry about that. He everybody knows who the leader of this team is. That pressure, it will not be on him. Really, he can just come in and play basketball. He is not going to be the the number one guy. That's that and what you're banking on is is that the power of LeBron will keep this thing knitted together just like this. That's all that's really what that's all about. And that's what LeBron James has done. Now, as far as basketball court goes, LeBron here's the track record of Kyrie. He's played with LeBron. There was no on court uh influence or bad problems with that. He's played with Kevin Durant. He knows how to how to play the game with with a superstar. And then most of all, the track record shows that he knows how to play with LeBron James. So it's comparing Kyrie to Russell is quite different. Kyrie can adjust to playing with stars. Russell Westbrook cannot be comfortable as anything other than a number one and a possibly a number two. When he came to L.A., he was destined to be the number three guy. That is not what Russell Westbrook is. He cannot do that. Kyrie will not be a number three option here because, as I said earlier, LeBron James will lead the league in assists this coming up year because his game can go to a number three with the occasional I'll take over parts during the game. And if he's really on, he'll take over one game out of five. This is all about Kyrie and AD. LeBron can adjust to any game that you come up with. He's going to lead the league in assists this year. And, uh, yeah. and the crowd goes wild. It has nothing to do with on the court. It's about off the court. So when we're talking about the two, Kyrie Irving is the better fit. Let's not, ladies and gentlemen, let's not sit here and act like we forgot the type of season Russell Westbrook had. I mean, we look at the numbers. Oh, he averages 18, 7, and 7. Let's go to that field goal percentage. Let's go through that three-point field goal percentage. Let's Turn go over. The, the turnovers. Let's go to the defense. Um, the, 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 I mean, he brought in a guy who was supposed to make it easier for LeBron, where Russ can be that guy. But guess what? Russ didn't have that great year. I mean, he had such a bad year, you guys. He would shoot the ball on the side of the basketball goal. I mean, you just can't make that up. He will bring the ball up court, and all of a sudden he'll lose it out of his hands and it just goes out of bounds. I mean, you just you cannot make these things up. Um, but now let's – so, Mike, to answer your question, my brother, we know what Kyrie LeBron can do. We know what Kyrie Irving can do on the court with LeBron. We've seen it happen. This guy is not going to play as bad as Russell Westbrook. That's not going to happen. The only concern is come with Kyrie is off the court. And then when you're the Lakers and you just seen the type of season that Russell Westbrook just had, guess what? You, you're, you're willing to try anything. All that you can do is say a little prayer and pray to that LeBron, um, Ham, or anybody else can control Kyrie Irving, make sure they control the situation where he do not get out of hand. That's the – because, I mean, we're – I mean, so just think about this. You bring back Russell Westbrook, a guy that's paid $47 million, you literally can do nothing. Let's get a little bit deeper in this trade, and I don't know where, where, where Philip is going with these debates, but there's talks about either a Joe Harris a part of this deal or a Seth Curry, and I expect other things to come with it as well. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm giving the show back to you, Phil. And let, let, let's touch on that availability part for Kyrie Irving, because honestly, I feel like we're overstating his lack of availability, and we're understating LeBron James, his, his role and his friendship with Kyrie. Remember, Kyrie's mentor was Kobe, the late Kobe Dean Bryant, and rest in peace. But outside of Kobe, LeBron James was the closest guy to Kyrie Irving, and he was able to connect with him 
to get him to focus on basketball. But take away those two years from Brooklyn, right? Take away those two years from Brooklyn. How many games have Kyrie missed in his career? How many off the court issues have we heard about from Kyrie Irving? I'm sure there's some things that weren't reported, but like we haven't, there was there's no history of issues with Kyrie Irving not being available until he got to Brooklyn, until COVID hit, until he started trying to find himself away from basketball. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not even worried about that. Honestly, I'm worried about who's going to come up off the bench to be that sixth man for us. You know, who's going to come give us give us those depth pieces to help us have a full, complete team. But how do y'all feel about Kyrie's? availability or lack thereof. Is that going to be a bigger issue or not really? <laughs> we just got to talking about it. I mean, I Only don't think so. Tell. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real. Hold on, I'm going to be honest. I don't think so. I truly hope not. Because if he comes to L.A. and that becomes a problem, you know, just because he want to take time off, I'm not talking about injuries. Because injuries are part of basketball. I'm mm-hmm. just talking about what he wants to take. If he does that this year, Kyrie Irving might find himself out the league pretty soon. Um, okay. there, there's teams that really don't want to deal with him right now. Um, so I don't think I, me personally, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think he'll be bought in. Um, that's why at least I'm hoping that's that's going to be the case. Um, you know, but that's just my opinion, and we'll, we'll talk about the rest of the game. All right, well, yeah, let's move over to the draft, like post draft, you know, summer league. So, you know, we signed a few guys to our summer league roster. We know the big names, obviously, Sharif O'Neal, uh, a Hollywood legacy, Scotty Pippen Jr. You know, we still have Mac McClung from last year. We got, I don't know if Austin Reeves is playing this year in the summer league, but we got him on the roster for right now. So, how do you guys feel about our youth movement? Do we pick up some good pieces? Are we in a good position moving forward, or what do you guys think? And we also signed Lonnie Walker, who was uh, what, a lottery pick. San Antonio, so I mean, he was a, a upside wing. How do you guys feel about that? Start with you, Jonathan. You know what? Uh, these kids got potential that's coming up. It, it seems like it. I mean, I haven't really seen a lot of Scottie Pippen uh, Jr., but I, I read a lot about him, and, and you know, for, it was a game that he participated in yesterday, and he looked pretty good. He looked pretty good from what I saw. Um, you know, and then Sharif O'Neal, uh, I got to see more on him before I can really evaluate him and and really say what I want to say about him. Uh, you know, that's Shaq's son. So it, it's it's the name. It has a lot to do with the name. Uh, you know, but, hey, I like the Lonnie uh, Walker signing. I think that's uh, a, a great pickup for the Lakers. Uh, he's, a, he's a good shooter when he wants to be. Um, I like that move. I think the Lakers have done a good job. Uh, you know, signing some of these guys to one-year deals. So I, I, I like it. I like the Lonnie Walker signing. Um, Scotty Pippen Jr., I like his potential. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we do definitely have a youth movement. But how long will that youth movement uh, stay in one place? You know, because the Lakers, uh, they would, you know, trade away those young assets just to win now. And we, in a heartbeat. We, right. And we see that year after year after year. So you can't make too much of it. Uh, but you you do see a lot of promise. What you got, Freddie? You know, I just love the fact that last year everybody's calling us the nursing home, calling us the old folks home and all that. And what did the Lakers do the first? I mean, the draft through the first day of free agency, they got younger. Right now, LeBron and Russ is the two oldest players on the roster at 30 years of age. Everybody else is 21, 22, 23. I like the kid Cole that we um, um, signed. um, You know, he didn't get to the he didn't get picked up in the draft. That kid, he can shoot, man. You know, he shot 41 percent in college, and in the first um, our first summer league game, it showed that he can score. Um, Scottie Pippen Jr. I will say this. I don't think – the only player I think that can get some playing time will be Cole. But I'm going to say this. If Scotty Pippen Jr. lights it, continue to light it up in summer league and he can show the Lakers that he can be what he's shown the first game, that he can be a guard that can go around um, screens, he can score, I would not be surprised if he takes some minutes uh, from some players. You know, because, hey, we're going to have to find players to fill this bench to go around whoever the big three will be. Uh, if that's Russ or that's Kyrie, no matter who it is, you know, and Cole, 
we got a dude by the name of Anthony Davis, and we know that street clothes, you know, he might go down for a couple of games. He might go, he might go down for a week, and we might need somebody to fill those shoes. So he might be forced to get some playing time. Um, I do like us getting Lonnie Walker, a young, a young kid. Um, you know, he's re- he played defense. You know, he's a guard that he don't mind going down and play defense. He is streaky at shooting, but he can knock it down once he get hot. I do like that. Um, and Troy Brown Jr., you know, same thing, athletic guy, um, a guy that plays defense. And then the, the Anderson kid um, from Go to State, I believe that he's going to be our energy guy to come off the bench, you know, give us some big plays here and there. Um, I think he'll be nice as well. And he played defense. That show, showed to me that the Lakers went all in on defense, um, you know, in, in for this free agency, the first wave. Um, they did say the second wave is going for three-point shooting, which is Kyrie Irving's on top of this list. And they have others. They mentioned a Buddy Hill or Eric Gordon. That best if that trade don't go through with Kyrie. Um, so I, I, like, I like our free agency so far, me personally. Hey Doug, on top of your um your evaluation of our younger guys, how do you feel about THT? Do you think we over overvalued him? Because he's been with us for a few years now, and he really hasn't seen that big of an uptick in production per se. But I mean, has he been getting many minutes? I don't know. But how do you feel about him along with our younger guys? Well, when it comes to THT, I think that you still have to understand. You know, he's a rhythm type player. You're not gonna get a lot of rhythm when you're playing with LeBron James and a Anthony Davis, even a Russ Westbrook, you're just not going to get the rhythm that you need. You know, he's not a, a streaky type guy, but what he can do, he can score. And personally, I don't want to see him go. Me, I mean, he is my fraternity brother in Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Let me throw that in. No doubt about that. I wanted, I want him to stay. But at the same time, I believe he's going to be the odd man out. And that ties into the original question with all the guys that we signed. Most of these guys that we picked up play his position. And they didn't come in for, you know, just to automatically come off the bench. Even if if THT is in the rotation higher, he's going to be sharing some of his minutes with these guys because – THT is not known as a great defender. Darvin Ham came in here preaching that we got to have defense. He went out, or Rob Palenka, I know it ain't Rob, but I'm just saying he's going to get the credit for it. But Darvin Ham went out and got defensive guys. That's what he went out and got. When you look at, when you look at Lonnie Walker, good Lord, I mean, he's a two-way player. He can light you up. And he can play D. Then when we go to a name that you guys haven't called that I absolutely love, and that's Damian Jones, the center. This guy is a nasty, athletic, dunk on you, uh, defensive type guy who I think fits in super athletic, uh, can get up in the air. This is the guy that we need as far as, you know, he he – He's a bigger version of Montrez Harrell, if you ask me. Just full of energy, can can flat out go up and go get the ball. Going to be plenty of lobs up this year. And, I mean, he's got to got and get it. Plus, he played good defense. When you talk about Troy Brown, the one thing that you, nobody has said about Troy Brown, and in my look, studying of him, the man got a 16 reach. He's 6'6", six, six, with a 16 reach. Can you say a wing defender? Good God. I mean, he he and he's a primarily defensive player. So the, these guys are big. When we talk about Anderson from Golden State, he can score. Love. I mean, he got a great game. It's just that on Golden State team, you're not gonna find too many minutes. It's just it's just that simple. It don't mean he can't play. It's just that he just wasn't gonna get the, the minutes. And then, of course, when you talk about Malik Monk gone, okay? Now we got to find guys to kind of replace that because Monk could score. I think we've done an outstanding job with finding guys who can fit the roles because they're not coming in to be the man, and they're not coming in to be the sixth man of the year. You have a specific role on this team 
do it. And I think that they've already started. Darham needs to be commended uh, for the immediate change. We're more athletic today than we have ever been probably in the last two years, to be honest with you, the last two seasons. So I'm down with uh with what we got so far. Good role players. And like uh, Phil said, there's another name that's going to make his appearance sooner or later, and that's Max McGlum, man. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something, man. Sooner or later, this kid need to be called up. He is incredible. Do you hear me? I'm, he got it all, man. I'm I'm serious. I've looked at Scotty Pippen Jr. and I must apologize to him because I said I'm not getting excited over no big names or your daddies. I ain't I ain't for all that. But Scotty Pippen Jr. can play. Or uh, Sharif, you know, come on, man. You know, I I he all right, but you know. I'll, if he plays, he's going to be at the end of the bench as of now. That's the only thing I'm going to say about him. One name we didn't bring up, Freddie, before you speak, is uh, last year, Stanley Johnson, right? The fourth overall oh, man. a few years ago from Detroit. The fourth came on strong for us last year. Defense. Great defender. Cutting to the basket. So, I yeah. mean, like you said, we're getting more athletic. We got the wing defenders. Now, time to these last few pieces to bring it all together. You got it, Freddie. Yeah, um, I did. Um, you know, they did report um, big time. Just to clarify the Rob Palenka point you brought up that um, Darvin Ham elected not to go to Summer League just to stay in L.A. with Rob so he can help build that roster. You know, because I did see – I see Ron down here, Ray down here talking about we need to give Rob Palenka more credit. Uh, where is that? Uh, Rob Palenka don't know about no basketball, man. Stop it. I'm going to be honest with you. This, this is my opinion. Rob Palenka will be out, out of L.A. Yeah. I'm just stating my opinion. I don't think yeah. the Lakers have empowered him to make the personnel decisions. I think it's other people within the organization helping him make those personnel hey, decisions. Johnson. It's not hey, totally. Johnson. He never made. We got to believe the brothers. We got to believe that brother, what he said. Didn't he say, every decision comes down to me? I make the last call. So I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, though. <laughs> you, you, don't think, you don't think that's true? No, I don't think that's true. Well, I'm just believing. I'm believing the man with the man. Freddie, you know better than that. You know good and well that man made no decision. When he got there, Magic Johnson made the decisions. When they when the Magic left, LeBron James made the decisions. When LeBron left, he called him. When he did have something to do with it, look where we at today. Man, get him out of there. No, it's, That's a, what I'm it's a combination of everyone involved. Hey, Doug. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Like, LeBron, when we see them guys are gone. Hey. It's LeBron having some input. It's Jeannie Buss having some input. It, it's everybody. Kurt Rambis, Linda Rambis. Exactly. So we're Let's not like this purposely saying, hey, Rob, don't get your flowers. That it's hard to see who gets the credit when you got 10 GMs on one team. I don't, I don't know. Who there the you go. I got something to say about that too. A little bit later. Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson even has some power. Man, I got power. I put something in. They did mine. Y'all just didn't know it. Go ahead. Before we move on, y'all, we're going to head to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. How you like it so far, Pod Bean? I'm talking to y'all. How, how we doing so far? Y'all like the show? I'm having fun. You know, I ain't got our responsibility to drive it. They can't hear me right now because the mic is being. So, how y'all like it so far? Talk to me. Hey, thank you there. Thank you there. Thank you there. Who is that in there? YM? Is that YM? H E C Y V E? Thank you for joining. While Freddie's doing that, we have one more. Um, we had a comment from uh, from Anthony Price it says LeBron shouldn't have an input at all. Just play the game and let the office sign people. Look, <laughs> clearly that hasn't worked for a lot of franchises in the past by just having non basketball players. What if I get it though, right? Everyone has a role, but LeBron is 
arguably the, one of the brightest minds that the sport of basketball has ever seen. If it's not in, including his input, it's something wrong right there. Right, right. And again, a lot of these players nowadays, they have input. You exactly. Know, that's how the league is today. It's totally different from how it was back in the day. You know, more of these players nowadays, they have influence. And the owners empower them to, you know, have a say, have, have their own voice. And and, and state how they feel ab- about the franchise and, and what they may want and and who, uh, you know, might be a, a best fit around them or something like that. So, I mean, that's just how it is now in today's NBA. Look, look. Some of those. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, guys. Come on, y'all. Look. <laughs> The the, at the the basketball IQ of LeBron James should never be questioned. How many years in a row did Cleveland go to the finals? LeBron got rid of coaches. LeBron changed rosters after the All-Star break every single year. Every year. He changed rosters. I mean, after the All-Star break, he told them, this is who I need. This is the type of player. What happened? They went to the finals. They hung a banner up in the air at World Champions. Now, he didn't have that power in Miami. Because Pat Riley don't let you run over him for nothing. So we ain't even talking about Miami years. But when he came to L.A. in two years, this man, it wasn't coach. Uh, what's, what's the coach got fired? An Indiana coach? I don't even recognize him. What's his name? Luke Walker? No, not Luke. Luke Vogel. Vogel didn't run nothing. LeBron James went and said, give me this guy. Go give me this guy. This is who I need. We'll win the championship. What did he do? He won the championship. So I don't know how we even question it. This man have been to what, how many finals? Ten? And he's been the orchestrator of a lot of rosters. So let's let's stop that now. Come on now. He knows what he's doing. can put his input in who he thinks the Lakers should go get. That don't mean they're going to go get him. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he should have an opinion. Anthony Davis should have an opinion. because These are guys that they have to play with. So, hey, hey, LeBron, what do you think? Who do you think we should go after? Thank you for the input. We'll put it on the drawing board. And guess what? We'll sit the back and we'll, we'll make the right decision. For the franchise, Kobe. Hey, Kobe did it. He might. Kobe might wasn't open as LeBron is, but I guarantee you, Laker management did not get anybody that they did not run by Kobe. He said that the Heat uh, gets the ring without LeBron's input. Uh, no, LeBron, D Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh. Like I don't. Hey, no, hey they did, I don't hey. know about that. Hey, uh, guess what? Check this out. If they didn't have LeBron input, where did Chris Bosch come from? Just saying. Not only that, let's not only let let's have common sense. Without LeBron James there, they would not have beat the Spurs back then. Let's just stop it. LeBron was the was the the you know the, the over the hump guy to take care of the Spurs, who was still dominant at that time. Come on now, let's let's not right, do that. Eddie. And he had leg cramps when the when the AC apparently broke down in in the building, and he still balled out. Let's keep it really real. The Heat weren't winning anything after that one championship with Shaq. I mean, they were going to the playoffs, but they were first round Ziggy's the whole until LeBron showed up. And that's with a and that was with an in prime D Wade. In prime. D-Wade. Come on now. Flash. Come on now. And I ain't no LeBron James fan. Now, I don't want y'all to think I am. But see, just because you're not a fan, y'all got to stop. Look, I don't know who y'all are. Y'all, y'all stop being haters, man. This dude is the truth and has been the truth for 20 years. This dude is the truth, man. I, I ain't no fan. Of, I mean, I'm a fan because he a Laker, but I've never been a gigantic fan of him. But you cannot deny it. What this dude is and what he has done now. Come on, y'all. Stop that. Hey, that's a, that's a good point, Doug. So for, for the ones watching at home, right, I can almost guarantee you, myself, Freddie, Jonathan, Doug, we're all Lakers fans and maybe Kobe fans first. But 
none of us are like LeBron fans. We support him because we support our team. So we <laughs> promise you, you're getting unbiased, unbiased yeah. support from us. We just want to see our team be hey. good like the rest of the fans. Before LeBron came to L.A., I respected his game, but he wasn't my favorite player. I, you know, but when he came to L.A. and when he and when he embraced Laker fans the way he did when Kobe died, when he stood up and said that speech, I gained so much respect for him uh, because that honestly that was the first time LeBron really embraced Laker faithful and others like that, you know. And when he did that, that um. That did they it. Gave, they gave me so much. Respect. That that did, hey, it too. that did it for me. And then and when he opened, I, I promise the school. That but look, remember when we first signed LeBron? A lot of Lakers fans were actually angry when he signed to us. Yep. A lot of us didn't want that. But then then Kobe came out in public and said, "Hey, hold up! I support I support him. He's part of the family, guys. Let's hold it down for him." Once Kobe gave us a pass. I was like, all right, bro. Y'all calling out Kobe when Magic Johnson said it's okay. Then that's when I crossed over. So I, I was with, with, with Magic. I ain't look, forget Kobe. I love Kobe, but good God. When Magic turns over the keys and says, okay, I'm going to let you have the keys to this, this, this franchise, that was good enough for me. But, ladies and gentlemen, I know Laker friends are just greedy. The Dallas Mavericks are still celebrating. That one championship they won with Dirk, they still celebrating. Laker fans are greedy, and I understand that. But here's the truth. LeBron James put a banner up in the rafters. He paid his debt. He promised the championship when he came here. He did it. I mean, ain't nothing else. You know, we just greedy. We want back to back to back. That's how Laker fans are. We want back. I mean, that's just how we are. We want back to back to back to back all that. This not this is not how the ball game works. This man has been to three franchises. The last one, he came to LA. He did what he said he was gonna do. And really, nobody, I mean, he put it up in the air, y'all. And I ain't no fan of him, but he is what he is. Kevin Durant. Yeah. Ooh, we. That's true. Well, look, I, just, I just heard a rumor. A crazy rumor. You guys won't believe this. I already know. The Golden State, the Golden State Warrior, and you know who's in the package deal? Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, and I forgot the two the two other players. I, I think it was Wiseman. Wiseman and Kamungi. Kamunga. Kamunga. Yeah, but why would you give away those those players when you already have a team that can run it back? Cause you're greedy. You're greedy. You're greedy, Doc. Let me tell you this, brother. You don't if fix we, something when it's not broken. John, let me tell you this. If if Kevin Durant came out and said, I want to come to the Lakers, I can guarantee you Anthony Davis' name will be a part of that. Uh, oh, I can I, I can guarantee Kevin you. I, I like Kyrie Irving. I'm I Kyrie guarantee Kyrie. you. I if Kevin Kyrie. Durant said, I want to go to LA, no. Anthony I'm Davis' Kyrie name. Irving, but I can't I can't deal with Kevin Durant. Jonathan, please, Jonathan, Jonathan, if you want to, if, look, Jonathan, see, see that right there? This is what I'm talking about, Jonathan, and, and I love you, brother. I, I do. But see, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about on the court. If you had the choice of giving Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis, you would be the first going to Anthony Davis' house and start packing them and getting them ready for the airport. You know that. So let's stop that now. Stop it. And, and the Davis can't stay on the court. I, like I said, you'll be the first one to go start packing immediately. Stop it. Look, can you, but can you blame Golden State? You, you brought up a good point, Jonathan, right? As they're built right now, he, and if you factor in wise among these being better next year, they can win a championship next year. We're talking about going from a really great team to an unstoppable team, bro. We're talking about Steph Curry and KD on the same floor again with a healthy, um, healthy play. That's tough, man. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough team right. to beat. I'm gonna tell you like Shane and Sharp said, because they they said, you remember how they said Lakers gave up too much for AD? Shane and Sharp said you will move heaven and hell to get a man like that. KD's in that same conversation, my brother. And you know what? I'm just laughing. And our little group chat here at ASAP, we have these little Phoenix fans. They're so happy. Oh, KD, KD. 
but they was the same ones calling the Lakers crazy for giving up all that for um, Anthony Davis. Where is the consistency? The way it's looking right now, KD might end up in, in Philly. Well, so here's the real question, right? So earlier in the segment, we broke down the Kyrie to L.A. rumors. We spoke about it at nothing, right? But we never really unpackaged that to discuss who would we trade to get Kyrie to make it happen or even discuss the potential rumors of a package trade with Kyrie and Katie. So, Freddie, you know, Doug, Jonathan, realistically speaking, who can we give away in order to get Kyrie without hurting our team too much? Or who would you be willing to give away? Well, Russ is definitely – he's number one. He's definitely – he is definitely number one. Hmm. THT going to be number two. Uh, he's out of here, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's number two. Yeah. Um, me personally, I don't care who you take out of you know, a lot of none of our new guys, Brian AD, you know, but I, I just don't want our draft picks to be gone. That's my main thing. We need to stop giving draft picks away. The Nets are desperate, they don't want Kyrie Victor already. So, why are we going to give them a busload with a guy that's already came out and said that he's coming here? Well, let me give you some pressure, Freddie. Let me give you some pressure. I'm the Nets, right? I'm the Nets. If you want Kyrie, give me AD. What are you saying? Um, have a good, have a good night. <laughs> good night. We'll, uh, we'll see Kyrie next year as a free agent. Look, it's going to be a massive haul because look, Sean Marks is going to want a lot in return. Sean Marks is going to want a lot in, in return, and and he's working on a deal right now to get KD out of there. Uh, but you know he's definitely going to want some future assets. Let me let me throw this in. Uh, it may not be just. I'm just coming from the other side, and I and and you make sense, Jonathan, what you're saying, and everybody is. But it may not be as as cost as much as we may be thinking because the Lakers want to get rid of Russell Westbrook. And the Brooklyn Nets want to get rid of Kyrie Irving. In other words, what I'm trying to say, headache for headache. And when you're really desperate to try to get rid of somebody, your your asking price may not be as crazy. And and Russell Westbrook, again, still has value. I don't care what nobody say. I still think that he can flat out do it. It would be a perfect place for him, actually, because KD going to be gone. Uh, Kyrie possibly be gone. Uh, ben Simmons will be there. You'll have that problem. One don't like to shoot, and the other one love to shoot. So I'm saying it's a perfect fit where he can go be the man again. He'll make the All Star team. He'll average a triple double again. It's the perfect spot for him. And when you want to get rid of somebody, you, it may not cost as much as you think. I think they'll trade away. THT now because of what we required in free agency. I believe he'll be part of the deal, but at the same time, the Lakers are going to get some back in return too, which is either Joe or Seth. And like I said before, the roles, that's a role that we need. Somebody can flat out knock down some shots. That's that, And that's what it's going to take. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just that simple. Russell uh, Joe, Hay- I mean Russell, I uh, mean uh, Kyrie, Joe Harris, or or Seth, simply for Russell and THT. Maybe a draft pick out out of that. I'm, I'm serious. They really want to get rid of them. They don't want. Uh, oh, okay. And the price, and they made it clear they don't want rest. Well, I, well, one thing we know for sure, it may take a three team deal. Okay, it may very well take a three team deal if that's the case. But Kyrie and Russell Westbrook will not be on the same roster start next year. We know that. So. And listen, taking back off Doug, there's a reason why you guys didn't notice as a report this morning, you said the Philadelphia 76ers are interested in, in Kyrie. Then it said the Dallas Mavericks. So they're not interested. That's straight that's strictly coming from Brooklyn because they're trying to make they trying to make LA scared. They trying to make LA give up the load. We all know this about being Laker fans. There's no team in the NBA that is trying to make the Lakers better. There's no team in the NBA that's going to that's going to help us. We've seen that with the Anthony Davis situation. They're 
They're just they're not trying to make this better. So they're they're scared right now because you know Joe Harris would not be a bad, bad addition. But the thing is, is the Lakers don't want to take on the contract. Seth Curry's cheaper and Seth Curry is better. Um, but then, I mean, at the end of the day, I do believe the deal is going to be done. Um, I'll throw this in, Freddie. Let me throw this in. Which is the reason why the Los, Los Angeles Lakers. See, maybe I'm cursed a little bit because, see, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. And one thing the Cowboys do, as well as the Lakers, we don't know when to be quiet. Don't say nothing. Just get the deal done. You ain't got to put it. You ain't, I don't need no leaks. I don't need no nobody that's giving good reports to maybe one of your friends who has a national platform. Be quiet and just get the deal done. Stop putting it out there because somebody who really going to want to go throw the world at them and snag them away. I mean, it's just as simple. Just learn how to be quiet. If you want them, go under the radar. Stop leaking stuff out. Be quiet and get the deal done. I, I don't, stop talking. That's all I'm saying. But at the end of the day, Kyrie Irving has the pressure on them. They don't want Kyrie. To be honest with you, they didn't want Kyrie from day one. Um and Kyrie has made it be known. There's a reason why Stephen A. Smith went on ESPN this week saying that he is telling people he's going to L.A. at the end of next year. That was said for a reason. Kyrie is saying these little things for a reason. He is scaring other teams away. Because why would you give up assets for a man that's going to be a year rental? Just like when we got AD, you guys. Boston had a better trade for Anthony Davis. But Boston was not willing to unleash him for a part-time player, for me, for basically a one-year rental, they they was not willing to do that. Same situation, man. <laughs> like, well, how do you how do you want to slice it? The NBA is better when the Lakers are at the top. Yeah. At the end of the day, the NBA is better when when LA is at the top, when Boston is at the top, and when the pecking order is at such. So, let's say we have um one of our last topics. Let's say we have a four of Anthony Davis, LeBron. Steph or Joe and Kyrie, what does that put us as far as the Pantheon or the rankings of the Western Conference? Does that put us in the top one through five places, or are we still fighting for playing seeds? Hell no. We're the top. We we're more favored than Golden State, or what, what you thinking, John? I, I would think so. With Kyrie, you, if Kyrie and, and LeBron and AD is together, all on the floor together and healthy, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely at the top. Golden State is close. But I I will put Golden State at second. I'm gonna be I'm gonna just tell you like this: if we was able to get Bron, Kyrie, and KD to play together, it wouldn't even be close to Golden State. Wouldn't even be close. I'm I'm just gonna be honest because no, they would. And, and no, 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 John, they wouldn't. If we, if we was healthy and nobody got hurt, we're talking about one of the best big threes we've ever played in the game of basketball. We're talking yep. about a seven. We're talking about a seven footer and Kevin Durant, Jonathan, that can score anywhere on the court. We're talking about Kyrie Irving. And as much as we criticize him, like I said, we criticize him off the court, not on the court. Uh, Kyrie Irving is a guy that can give you go for 35 to 40 in a given night. We know that. And we all know who LeBron James is. If you, I mean, just, just call it spade a spade. If that big three teams up, they will be the heavy favorite to win the championship next year. I don't know. I think the Lakers and the Warriors are the two that can separate themselves from everybody else. I think they'll be in a tight race for for the one and, and for at number one and number two. And then, of course, you'll have your Memphis Grizzlies, your Dallas Mavericks, and, you know, the Clippers and all those other guys out in out west but no i think i think it'd be a tight race between golden state and the only thing i can trust the clippers like, with is that edge up right there my boy and i need to go meet him meet somebody. that's the only thing so you know the day they choked on uh the day they choked on spicy nuggets i i i told my barber i had to cancel my appointment because i didn't trust in the clippers that day <laughs> Let, let me let me be the one that will will, will respect the world champions. Um, I'm going to respect the world champions and say that they will be the number one seed. But check me out here; it'll be by default. The reason why 
it'll be by default is for the first time, if Kyrie is here, if he comes, the plan that we've been hearing about for the last two, three years will finally happen. And that is simply LeBron will get rest. Because let me tell y'all something. Kyrie Irving can put 50 on you. And and LeBron will be able. I'm I'm already saying LeBron will adjust his game to be the leading assist man in the league. He's not going to be trying to score 30 like he did last. He had to. He will turn that over to Kyrie and, of course, AD if he's healthy, of course. He's going to get some rest this year. The games that he does not play, the Lakers will still be the favorites in most of those games because Kyrie and AD, if they're, if AD is not in street clothes, of course, if he's there, that is going to be enough to win a lot of ball games. The Lakers don't care nothing about when you got them big three. If LeBron is rested, when playoff time come, long as they won the four, nobody will want to see them in a seven-game series. LeBron is not fit to play 82 games a year with Kyrie there. He's going to play somewhere between probably 65 to 74 games. He's going to get that rest that he needs. i matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to, going to tell y'all, in a very reverse-type way, if LeBron is healthy, if these guys can stay healthy, it's a big if. But if they can we may be seeing probably one of the greatest seasons for LeBron James ever. That's all I'm going to say about it because, yeah, I'm going that route because I'm telling you, he is a – everybody want to compare him to Michael Jordan. He was never Michael Jordan. The comparison should have always been compared to Magic Johnson. That is the comparison to LeBron James. It's never been Michael Jordan. He is Magic Johnson. And if he gets to play the Magic Johnson role, look out. That's all I'm going to tell you. And I was thinking just now, Doug, like I can see him playing more of like a souped up Draymond role. Just more production, but same kind of role. Facilitate, yeah. grab some boards, push the offense, but kind of stay out the way. You know, mm -hmm. let the young guys eat. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one last thing. Um, keep an eye out. I've been seeing reports of Thomas Bryant. I think he's trying to wait. To see what this Kyrie KD trade is going to do, uh, but he, you know, the Lakers do have interest, and he have interest. I believe it's out of him in Boston. What I'm seeing, but if uh, we, if, I believe we get Kyrie, we'll be able to get Thomas Bryant, which is another young key piece for this team. That'd be a great pickup because, like I, like we said earlier, Freddie, he started his career in LA as a young guy, more of an energy player. He left us, got some skills, a lot more mature, physically stronger. That'd be a great pickup for us, especially because we still have Dwight, but. I don't know if we're gonna resign the white or not, so we can use a good a good big, you know. No, I've seen her before. We're not. We're not gonna keep. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's been time for him. <laughs> Let him go. I, like, I wonder. We should have kept Javale McGee, honestly. Yes. Kept McGee. <laughs> yes. I agree. But fellas, uh, I'm gonna go around the horn one time, but it's been real, Freddie. What you got for the team, man? How you feeling? Man, oh man, oh man. Scary hours is approaching, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm going to say. Scary hours. Jonathan? You muted, my brother. Kyrie to the Lakers in the coming days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, and before I pass it to Doug, if that comes true, you heard it here first on Lakers 101 -on -one Talk on ASAP Sports Network, baby. Go ahead, Doug. Um, here's my prediction. I've already got a Toys R Us account for the Lakers. Uh, a, um, a baby, a baby, a Gerber stuff. And I'm sending the package straight to LeBron because he has a job to do other than basketball. We'll call it the LeBron James daycare service uh, where he has to babysit AD, Kyrie, uh, who and whoever else is left that that's you know that that's what I'm saying. But ladies and gentlemen, look, please understand that never underestimate the power of LeBron James. 
on the court and outside of the court. These conversations that we're having and debating and pointing out have already been done by LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. Please understand that. And 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 if that is the case, there's some assurance to remember. Y'all talking about what he did in Boston, and y'all talking about what he did in Brooklyn. The track record shows he ain't never done it with LeBron James. And he played with him. It's no problem. Yo. Do you still have those phone numbers on, on, on speed dial that you mentioned last week? Say what now? Do you still have those phone numbers on speed dial that you said mentioned on the last show? I got them, but I, I'm I'm trying to kind of hold it back right now, just trying to trying to see how this point out. But I I've already started like like Rally uh, Valdez said. Uh, look, I've already making the connections with the daycare services. I'm, I'm doing all that right now. Exactly. I'm setting up the register now because LeBron James will have a mighty hat that he's never really had before on his team. He is really going to have to be the one to keep this thing together because Kyrie has has a few more screws that have been loose. If you know, if he say the world flat, let him say that. Just get on the court and play ball, and and let's roll. That's all I'm gonna say. My last question, Phil. I promise. Last question. So if yeah. LeBron's able to do that next year, Doug, when everything go good, he should automatically win MVP, correct? <laughs> I believe LeBron, yeah. I believe he should be the NBA man of the year if that's such an award. I think he ought to be the NBA GM of the year yeah, because he, he look, I believe that he should be the envy of the most valuable player. I believe that even if he don't get enough votes, he should be the captain of the all-star team. I believe he should get all that, man. He should be everything that the NBA offers because he is going to have, I'm serious, he's going to have a, a job that he never had before, and he's well able to do that. I'm just saying, he, he, he can do that. He may be the only person in the league that can do this, and uh, he's done it before. He'll do it again. So I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just praying for the brother. He should have a problem, but he can handle it. Come to my mind, Doug, man. This is not my last point. But one of the greatest NBA tragedies is the lack of MVPs LeBron James has won throughout his career. That man arguably averages one of the greatest seasons every single year for his entire 20 year career. And how many MVPs do you have to show for it? But that's a topic for a different day. <laughs> um, once again, this is Lakers Talk One on One. We appreciate the comment section. We had a great time interacting with you all. Don't forget, if you, if you like our show, please like us, share us, and subscribe to our channel. We're on Roku TV, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. Please follow us everywhere. Again, on the ASAP Sports Network, we're at Lakers Talk 101. I'm your host, Bill Tross. Our panel today was Freddie, Big Time Doug, and Jonathan Mathis. Please tell them where they can find you guys at. Ahead, uh, you can find me on the All Sports All Place Network. Uh, just about any show over here. You never know. I'll pop in and I'll pop out. Um, just glad I, I love doing the show with these gentlemen. I, I honestly I look forward to doing this show with each and one of you guys. You guys are amazing. The best Lakers show there is out there, and we represent. One hundred. Y'all know I'm a close now. Let I me mean, go ahead. Yeah, stop looking around. Y'all know I'm a close. Go ahead. Now you guys can find me right here <laughs> at the A Step Network. I'm on 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 a number of shows on this network. Um, you guys can also find me on Twitter. You guys are gonna uh, find an unhappy Jonathan over there. He's about to rant about these Dodgers blowing um, a one nothing lead, bottom of the ninth. Uh, I know <laughs> tragic, uh, but uh, you can find me there, and you can find me on Instagram as well, Sports Judge eighty five, and you can find me on Facebook. I have a fan page. It's called the Sports Judge. Oh, uh, look. Um, y'all see that name right there above my head? It's I make it very simple for you. It's, it's that it, the Big Time Show podcast. This is what I need you to do to make it very easy, very simple. Just go to YouTube and go and just subscribe to that. I primarily talk about uh, the Lakers, and my primary thing is the Dallas Cowboys. So that's what I talk about on close years, Freddie. Don't start. You you made it through a show without any controversy. Just just calm down. But uh, go to YouTube, become a subscriber to that. 
Uh, and then as if, if you come, I'll tell you everything else. If you want to go to Twitter, it's real simple. At Big Time Lou. At Big Time Lou. That's where you have to do it. And, of course, uh, this is a pretty good uh, panel here. I'm sorry my other brother wasn't here tonight because I know he would have had something to say to Mario, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, man, he been calling this for a while, so he would have had a chance to shine tonight. And uh, we would all had to bow to his feet because he saw this coming. And I can't wait to uh, hopefully uh, when we have the next show, hopefully this thing may be done. And uh, we'll just let, I'm, I'm going to sit back and just let him gloat because he said it was going to happen. And uh, I can't wait to see it. But ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of, uh, and Phil going to close us out, but on behalf of uh, Jonathan and Freddie, the owner of the All Sports, uh, All Plays uh, Network, let me tell y'all this. Whenever y'all see us, it's real simple. The crowd goes wild. Again, you can find us at the Hall Sports Hall Plays Network. It's been real, fellas. Peace out. Hall Sports Hall Plays. Bye, Bean. Bye, Bean. How you like it? How you like it? We out of here. Thanks for hanging with me.